Hey, what's going on YouTube? Chuckles again with another video. Today I'm going to be uh, showing you the software I use to stream and record my videos. Um, so let's just jump right into it. I use Open Broadcaster software for um, streaming purposes. This is it right here. It is a free download, which is why I use it over XSplit. XSplit is like $30 and OBS is free. So when you first install it and pop it up, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, except your sources and scenes will be blank. So scenes, what the scene is, is basically what you're going to be doing. It's just the name you can give of, uh, basically it's just a placeholder. So I, I named mine Twitch, and these are your sources. Sources are what you're going to be streaming, what's going to be recording, what's going to be your audio, what is going to, what the screen is going to look like. So um, this is your audio like a microphone and this is the audio from say the game or your desktop or whatever music um, so we'll jump right into the settings first I use English language obviously um, and then your profiles these don't really matter I have a 1080p profile and a 720p profile the 720p profile I use if I'm going to be recording straight from OBS for iPod or phone tablet purposes I don't I don't need full 1080p for that so uh, 1080p for when I'm streaming. Encoding, I didn't touch anything. This is all default, uh, how OBS comes. Broadcast settings, um, Twitch TV is the only thing that you have to switch to. Um, you can also do like YouTube, uh, then I don't, never even heard of any of the others, but server, I chose the closest server to me out of the ones that drop down. There's not a whole lot to choose from. Uh, Chicago, Illinois is pretty close to where I'm at, so. Uh, this key, this key is you get this straight from Twitch. If you go to your Twitch profile and under settings or options, it will give you a stream key, and that's where you want to place this. Or else, if you don't have this, you'll be streaming into thin air. It won't pop up on your your profile. I have auto reconnect popped um, because if the stream goes down, I want it to automatically reconnect me. Because if I'm playing a game and I don't notice that it goes down or something, it will just auto reconnect for me, which is quite nice. Keep recording if live stream stops. I have that checked just in case the stream does happen to go down and then uh, something monumental happens. I still have it recorded so I can at least make a YouTube video about it. I have it saved, or I have everything, my recordings and my streams being saved to a external hard drive. You do not want to record or stream off the same hard drive that your game is on. You want it to be a second hard drive. You have to have a second one. It will lower the quality substantially. It will take a 1080p video and make it look more like 480. So you always want to go to a second hard drive. And then my hotkeys are set to insert. I have it set to a hotkey. Uh, you don't have to. You can clear these. But I have it set to insert just because I want to be able to push one button and then start and stop the stream or start and stop the recording at any given time. No, I don't want to save those. Video, uh, I have 1920 by 1080. There's my graphics card that it runs off of while I'm streaming. So aspect ratio is very important. You want it to be 16 by 9 at all times. Um, and then resolution downscale, I don't have any. You can downscale it if you wanted to. It would make it look smooth, like if you don't have a very good computer. But I mine's pretty decent, so I want my downscale to be none. I want it to stay 1920 by 1080. I want the quality. Frames per second, I lock to 30 frames per second at all times. That way it's a very smooth transition. There's no lag within the stream. Um, you can set it to 30 frames per second increments, so you could also do 60, 90, so on and so forth but I prefer 30 just because it looks very smooth. Disabling arrow, uh, that's your like arrow peak. See how this is now like this color, Windows 7 basic as opposed to being able to see through it. I have that disabled because that will lag you out like nobody's business while you're streaming. So arrow peak and arrow snap and all of that stuff gets disabled which is very nice. Audio is pretty pretty straightforward I have nothing changed with the exception of my the, where, where the audio comes out is my speakers as opposed to my headset that way I can still run um, like music or something like on the stream so people can hear the music as opposed to not being able to hear it <laughs> so microphone is the headset I, I wear the headset that way I have a decent mic and the audio d won't come out of my speakers and back into the microphone rest is just set by default 
advanced. I haven't touched anything with the exception of this CPU pre preset. I have it set to very fast. I have a pretty decent processor, so I have it set to very fast. You can go up to ultra fast, but what I found with ultra fast is it tries to go, OBS tries to go too quick for my processor, and it will cause it to, to have some like uh, screen tear issues and sync issues. So I just use very fast, and it looks very great. Microphone noise gate. This is very, very important. I can't stress this enough. This one you will have to play around with. So I have mine set to 14 decibels and 13 decibels for closed and open thresholds. Now why I have that is because I run a purifier in my in my office here. I'm a smoker, so I run a purifier, and it's pretty loud. It's a fan that is f fairly substantial. So I have it set to where I have to be talking at least 13 and 14 decibels in order to pick up any kind of audio. That way that, that fan noise is not in the background and everybody can hear it. So now we'll get into it. This is what your stream will look like. My, my Right now if I was to go live, all they would hear is me talking and a black screen because I have none of my sources checked. So we'll do my Twitch overlay. Uh, let's make this big screen. So Twitch overlay, this is now what they would see on their screen. So I made this in Photoshop. Uh, you, there's, you, you can find them all over the place though. I'll be more than happy to share mine too so people can use it. I'll, I'll make it an editable thing or something so you can change all the names or whatnot. And then your monitor capture, or the game for that matter. That is the monitor we're on, that's why it looked like that. And then my webcam. So we'll turn that on real fast. Okay, that's me recording the video. And now if I had a game running, it would be in the background as well. Right in this black area right here. And that's what the stream would see. So we'll stop that. And then all you have to do is just hit start streaming and start recording. Or hit your hotkey, insert in my case, and it would start, start the stream. So we'll get out of that. And now I will show you what I am using to record my desktop real fast. Uh, that was something that I struggled with for the longest time. Here it is right here. I've been recording for about seven minutes. It is Camtasia Studio. So let's go ahead and pop that up. It is this guy. So we'll make that large again. So this is by TechSmith. They also make the program Snagit. If you guys ever played around with Snagit, I love Snagit. So, and then it's right up here. Record the screen. This, I think, program is like $45, $50, something along those lines, but it's been very beneficial to me. This is what I use to edit all of my audio for videos. I don't use it for the video portion, but I do use it for the audio. Uh, I also use it for, like I said, recording my desktop because Fraps is terrible for doing that. So we'll exit out of that, and then I'll bring up Fraps. Here's my Fraps settings. I use that symbol for my capture hotkey, so anytime I click that, it will automatically start recording, stop recording, whatever video. I have the split movie every four gigabytes option checked for editing purposes. It's very easy to uh, edit as opposed to having a two hour long video. I now have, you know, several ten minute long videos that I can edit. So record Windows 7 sound, you want that checked because that will record whatever the, the game is producing. Um, record external input, that is my microphone, so if I wanted to live commentate or if I wanted to capture any kind of audio that I'm saying through the headset, it will record that as well through Fraps. And then I have it set to 30 frames per second, like I said, for smooth transition purposes. Screenshots, I don't play with, I, I don't need screenshots when it comes to uh, Fraps. FPS, however, this is kind of important, the overlay hotkey. During the video, you'll see uh, numbers up in this upper left hand corner up here. So I usually hide it when I'm recording. That way I don't have to see it during the video or don't have to edit it out or anything like that. But you can you can move it around. So Fraps is what I use to record all of my gameplay purposes. So video, I use Sony Vegas Pro. So Sony Vegas Pro is very good at the video portions. Uh, you can have several tracks going down the line, and you can your your timeline is just beautiful when it comes to Sony Vegas Pro. So this is what I use when it comes to editing video purposes, not the audio though. Audio I use Camtasia. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope the video was beneficial. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day.